In this video I'm going to be talking about springs in general, but first I'm going to use this Vortec for an example before I go into details about springs, how to choose springs, etc. So here this is a stock Vortec, this is one of my Vortecs, uh, this one is stock springs, stock shocks, everything, it won't be for long because I always end up upgrading these. Uh, and it's those red springs, whatever the spring rate is, I have no idea to be honest. Uh, Traxxas does sell some uh, red springs that they call, uh, which are uh, pretty nice. Uh, but these, uh, notice I can do some power slides. That's really what the car is made for, I would say, out of the box to make power slides. Uh, as far as I can tell, the springs front and rear are the same. Overall length being about 22 millimeters, inside diameter being 15.5, and wire thickness being 1.76 to 1.88. Uh, two of them appear to be slightly thicker, uh, but they seem to be the same. But notice again, uh, Let's just say the same springs for the purpose of this. I don't know what the rates are actually, but it just drifts. Now here, I went to the extremes. I have really hard springs in the back. So I actually have the 8364. These are the black stripe, which are 4.4 spring rate. And in the front, I went with the lightest I could find from Traxxas, 8366, which are uh, 2.8. And notice how the car just wants to turn. It, it oversteers like crazy uh, with the really stiff springs in the back and there I clipped the curb and I actually took a chunk out of the uh, bumper because I'm not running a body uh, but I didn't want to run a body now it has been raining actually as of now as I'm doing this it is pouring outside so this is the driest I could get just to uh, get the results and they're pretty good keep in mind there is some gravel there so that will affect everything but once again with the extreme really light on the front really heavy in the rear it wants to just oversteer like mad. Now here, I did the complete opposite. I took those rear springs, put them in the front, and then the front, put them in the rear. So now I have really hard front springs and really soft rear springs. And no, look how it just wants to push. So in order for me to make the car turn, I have to let off the throttle, apply throttle, and then kind of play with the throttle to get the car a little uneasy, unstable, you know, get that weight shifting back and forth, rocking a little. And then sometimes I lose control. But notice how the car just pushes with the extremely soft springs in the rear and really hard springs in the front. Uh, so this is something that is very important when selecting springs. You have to observe what the car is doing. So here, if you have a car, for example, that is pushing a lot, uh, one of the things that you can try is go heavier springs in the rear. Now you could also go lighter springs in the front. So you can do the opposite, the inverse, uh, and it will uh, have a similar result uh, but if you go too too light your car will end up bottoming out a lot and I'll explain that once I start talking about oil and springs uh, now here uh, here I got rid of the preloads and the shocks I actually put some other shocks which I'm going to show you how to build them later on uh, these are uh, replacement shocks that you can get for a Fortec and I'll show you the brand everything uh, and I like these just because of the collar. It has a threaded collar instead of using the preloads. And the springs that I'm using for this are 8363. So these are the 0 .075 spring rates. Those are in the rear. And then in the front, I'm using slightly lighters, uh, the lighter springs. These are the 8362. These are the 3.7 spring rate, which is actually what I like. I like the setup. Now, rear right height, I'm running about a 5.5. Uh, in the front, uh, this is if you measure on the inside part of the chassis, so ju just before or after the tire, in the middle. Uh, and then uh, the rear, actually it's, it's a millimeter, a millimeter difference. Keep in mind that when you swap springs, you cannot just swap the springs and call it good. You have to adjust the right height uh, every single time because of the different uh, differences. And that's very important to understand the differences in the spring rate. So uh, really quick, your shocks are going to have two things, two main things. One is going to be uh, shock oil, so the oil for the dampers, and two, it's going to have springs. Now, these two work together, and you do have to match them, so you can't just put whatever springs you want and then expect the oil to do the same, although I guess uh, you can change 
At that point, you'd be getting into replacing the pistons, which is a whole other variable I'm not getting into today. Today, I'm just talking about springs and oil. I'm also going to give you sort of a ballpark on this. And again, toward the end of this, I'll show you the shocks that uh, I use on my Vortex, the ones that I upgrade to uh, the aluminum body. Uh, but going back to touring cars, uh, X-Ray, this works for the X-Ray X4. So uh, I ran that for a while, Mugen as well. I have uh, uh, used to run a BD-10 as well, and that was fun, the Yokomo. Uh, so just for the basics, if you just have a Fortec, a car that you're just, you want to tune and just bash around, this applies. If you have a car and you're starting and you're getting into racing, this will apply too. The most important upgrade that you can make to a car isn't actually the electronics at first, it's your springs, your springs and your oil. And uh, if you've watched some of my race videos, something that I haven't really mentioned until the later videos, uh, is the following. So one of my buddies and I, uh, he was doing the whole uh, change of the springs, oil, and tuning the suspension. Whereas with me, I was doing the whole tuning the motor, uh, doing that whole thing, and then seeing what worked. So my stock setup, well, I was using pretty much the stock setup with the springs, especially on the uh, Yokomo. Yokomo, that's out of the box, is a pretty good setup for on road. Uh, there's still some things that you can improve, and I'm going to mention them in a bit. Uh, X ray, you definitely need some more springs, uh, some new springs, I should say. But uh, the oil for the dampers, what this does is this slows down uh, the rate in which the car compresses the suspension. So the thicker the oil, the more it slows it down. The lighter the oil, the less it slows it down. So it's free to travel uh, downward. Uh, and if you've seen my video with a um, Revo, Revo 3.3, so that's the Nitro Revo, uh, I did a comparison with that one. That one I ended up going all the way to 60 weight uh, because the weight was way too light. And 60 weight is approximately 800 CST uh, on that one. But anyway. Uh, going back to springs, so now, so oil, oil is just for dampening, that's what it does. On a touring car, if it's a light touring car, for example, the Yokomo BD-10 or BD-11 now, or if you add the BD-9, uh, you can get those for a pretty good price. Or the X-Ray X4, or even uh, the X-Ray T4, X-Ray T4, those are tanks. Uh, if you're racing, you can pick those up for a very good deal, and they're very durable. Uh, MTC2, or even if you have the MTC2R. Now the MTC2, as of this video, if you go to Mugen's online store on eBay, you can pick up a brand new built chassis for 400 US dollars as of now shipped. I believe it's shipped, I don't remember, but anyway, $400. And I'm mentioning this because somebody at a local, somewhat local place, Swap Meet, paid 500 for one and I couldn't believe it. I, I wasn't sure if the guy selling this ripping the guy off or if the guy had no idea or if both of them didn't have an idea. You can get them brand new for $400. This is the MTC2, not the R. Uh, the R is still expensive. You're looking at over 700, close to $800 for that one and it's not built. Uh, but back to the springs, what the springs do is the springs keep the car up. That's what they do. So the oil is for it to compress, it slows down the rate. The springs are not really there to slow down the rate, although they will affect how much it slows down just because of the nature of these things are always in compression, so they're always trying to push outward. Uh, but they're really to put the car back up after the compression takes place. That's the job of the springs. So if you go with really, really hard springs and super light oil, uh, that's the lightest I have. This is probably the lightest. No, actually, here we go. 35, I think, is the lightest I have right now. Uh, what's going to end up happening is your car is going to bounce. So if you start noticing the car is bouncing a lot, you're going to have to do one of two things. Either go with a softer spring or go with a heavier oil. Uh, maybe something like this. It just depends on a Fortec. Don't be surprised if you use this. Um, but on um, Fortec, generally 500 CST. Well, this is close enough, 40 weight. This is pretty good on Fortex. Uh, if you're doing 30 uh, touring cars, not the Fortec lighter ones like the X-Ray, Yokomos, etc., you're probably going to be looking at uh, about 425, 450. So you're looking at about 35 weight or 37.5. And where's my 30? So here we go. So that's about 460. That's probably what you're going to use somewhere around there. Now, uh, springs. 
springs are very important. So just like you saw in the video to a point is um, you are going to have the setup. So start with the stock box setup and then see what the car is doing and what you want the car to do. If the car is not rotating enough, meaning it's not turning much, so it's pushing, the car's pushing or it's, it, if you have really soft springs, the car's just going to feel really slow. Uh, if you have softer springs in the rear and then soft springs in the front, it's going to lean a lot. You're going to have a lot of body roll. And you can see this when I was using the Zero uh, by 3 Racing. The very first races, actually pretty much all of them, I don't remember if I replaced the springs on that thing or not. Maybe the very last race. But the goal for that was to test motors, not to test the springs. That's why I kept the same setup pretty much. Uh, so if you look at that car, it rolls a lot and it's just slow. It's just cruising. It doesn't really care. Um, now, if your springs are too, too stiff, uh, one of the things that is going to start happening is you're going to start either traction rolling or you're just going to start sort of sliding. And that brings me to a, the following point. So if the car just uh, pitches a lot, right? just pitches a lot, just goes left and right a lot, uh, and it just feels slow, start stiffening the springs. So start with either the front, and then you can stiffen the front. Now, if you stiffen the front, and then it just feels slow and the car is pushing, you wanna stiffen the rear a little. Now, when you stiffen the front springs, the reason why it might push is the following reason. When you have those thicker springs, those thicker springs are applying more pressure, say, on the tire, through the arm, through the suspension, on the tire. So what's happening is it's trying to keep the body, the car up, so the car cannot transfer as much weight to the front as it would with softer springs. So because of that, what ends up happening is uh, the force that is transferred, say, from the weight of the shock tower, because that's where the weight is, that's the pendulum. They think about that's where it, it, uh, what am I thinking, a teeter-totter, that's what it is. Um, it's right on that point. So if I were to use this as an example, right, this is where it's pivoting, right here, and then it applies pressure to the arm, and that applies pressure, say, to the tire. So all the weight is actually hanging right here on the shock towers, uh, right? This is the unsprung mass, sorry, this is the sprung mass, this is the unsprung mass, and here, so this is going to sort of pitch left and right. So what ends up happening is if you have a really heavy spring in the front, it's going to apply that pressure. That weight isn't going to transfer either left or right or front rear. And all of that pressure uh, is going to go straight to the tire and you're going to overload the tire really, really fast. So what that means is you're going to exceed the limits of grip that the tire has because you've exceeded the, the uh, frictional force that the rubber can actually uh, hold. Uh, that's the reason why. Whereas if you have softer springs, the weight transfer will be at a slightly slower rate, which means that you're not going to load that tire up immediately. So it gives that tire a little more time to sort of adjust and grip. Now, really quick, I mentioned frictional force. Uh, frictional force, uh, force is, well, mass times acceleration. So uh, if you think about it, the car has a certain amount of mass, and then as you turn, there's an acceleration that's applied, so that acceleration changes. If the car is just sitting like this, yes, there's an acceleration, acceleration of gravity. You still have some frictional force, right? But then as you're running and you turn, you just add some more force. So if you think about it that way, if this doesn't compress as much, that means it's going to apply a great deal of force really fast uh, because the rate of change very, very little, right? Because it compresses very little, little in a uh, relative amount of time. Uh, well, I guess everything happens so quickly, I should say, in the same amount of time, right? This thing loads up, it's more force. Versus if it takes its time and slowly compresses during the same period of time, uh, you're not gonna lose traction as much, so it's not going to push as much. Uh, and I hope that was clear. I'm trying to <laughs> not make this video too long. Uh, so using my hands, if you load it really fast, that's a lot of force, right? Mass times acceleration. The acceleration was very fast. And during the same period of time, if you slow it down, which is why maybe you'll consider a dual spring rate, uh, that will sort of ease you into the turn 
and then start applying more force toward the end. Uh, so it might feel like it pushes a little, a little easier going into the turn and then it will grab uh, later on in the turn. Uh, but going into that, that's really what's going on. So the thing is, think about it this way. If you have stiff front suspension, it's going to push the front, it's going to track the rear, right? So it's the opposite. So whatever you do to the front is going to affect the rear. Whatever you do to the rear is going to affect the front. So that's the reason why, you noticed in the video, when I had the really, uh, really hard springs in the front, right, the car would push. So the rear end looked very stable, but the car just kept pushing, meaning it was understeering. Now, when I did the complete opposite and I went to the opposite extreme, so I had the really soft springs in the front and the really hard in the rear, what happens is the front would turn really quick. Why? Because now the weight is transferring to the front, but the rear tires are being loaded too fast. So they're losing grip. So the car is rotating faster, eventually losing traction and oversteering. Uh, so if your car, one of the ways to counter oversteer is go softer springs in the rear or harder in the front. Uh, let's see, did I say understeer or oversteer? Let me start again. So if you are understeering, right, go harder in the rear, softer in the front. If you're oversteering, right, so you're losing the rear, uh, go stiffer in the front or softer in the rear. And it's just going to depend on what you have. If you're bottoming out a lot and your right height is set properly, you probably want to change your oil, go a slightly heavier oil, and then change the springs to adapt. If the car seems really, really slow in general, uh, but it handles well, you may want to step up both the front and the rear, rear springs. So say you have, uh, let's just say it's just regular touring car. Let's say you have uh, 2.5 in the front, 2.6 in the rear. Well, try 2.6 in the front and 2.7 in the rear. So try that. Um, right, if it's the entire car, you'll be surprised how much more traction you'll get just by stiffening up the springs a little. But again, don't go too wild and crazy because then the car is just going to start traction rolling or just sliding. Uh, and it's somewhat of a pain because it'll slide over steering or it'll slide under steering. You, you'll pick it up, then you have to sort of bring it back. Uh, now, springs. Fortec, uh, I mean, I have all the spring rates uh, for different cars depending on what I'm using. Uh, if I do high power, I like stiffening up the rear just a little more so that it doesn't bottom out. So I go a little stiffer or else it'll just bottom out. If you run the stock springs, I mean, that thing will just drop that rear end. You'll be scraping. Uh, but if, if I have the stock electronics and I'm just bashing about uh, the springs that I use, actually it's these because I just upgraded this one car. Uh, so I will use the slightly stiffer in the rear. So it's these right here, 8363, which are the 0 0.075. And these are the ones with the green stripe. And then on the front, uh, these are just red. Uh, these are 8362 and they're seven, sorry, 3.7 rate. Now these reds are different than the stock reds. The stock reds, the wire is actually thicker. It's about the same amount of coils uh, earlier I gave the dimensions for the stock springs. Stock springs are about 22 millimeters uh, in length uh, for a Fortec. The inside diameter is about 15.5. Wire thickness can range from uh, 1.73-ish to about 1.86. Uh, this is slightly thinner wire for the 3.7s. So those reds are probably somewhere in between. I just know what this, I don't know what the spring rate is. I'm, uh, but the other thing to keep in mind, and I can do this with my calipers, is the coil count might be the same, but the overall length of the spring may not be the same. So these are about 24.2 versus the stock ones are, now these are the white stripe, stock ones were 22. So keep that in mind. And it's, I believe it's the same coil count. Now, if I go for these, uh, here, let me 
put them roughly, I believe it's the same coal count. Uh, no, slightly different coal count. Uh, if the wire, if the diameter, the length, and the wire diameter is the same, whichever one has more coils is going to be the softer spring. So if it has less coils, it'll be a harder spring, assuming everything else is similar, right? Height. So these, the height is about the same. Uh, but the wire, if you notice the thickness of the wire, this is the problem with this 1.7. Oh, 1.7. All right, so these are both the same. So the difference here is the coil count. If we look at these, they're about the same here. This one has a slightly longer coil. See, it wraps to here versus there. Uh, this is the orange. So this is a 3.325. This is the white, which is a 2.8. Oh, interesting. Less windings, it's actually lighter. Well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, almost seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah, six. Six. Huh, that was interesting. Well, now I'm really curious. There's usually less coils, assuming everything else is the same. Uh, they're stiffer. These are rated as, yeah, this is a 3.325 spring rate. And, huh, go figure. I have no idea. Maybe it's different wire. Uh, no clue at this point. Huh, maybe I measured a different coil. They're not the same. This is 1.9 now. I thought it was 1.7. All right, well, this wire is thinner. I mean, it looks thinner, so that's, I'm gonna go based on that. So this is a thicker wire, this is thinner. I mean, it looks thinner. I'm not sure where I got that other measurement. Maybe the powder coating is just thicker on one part and that's what I measured, which is a high high chance. But anyway, uh, this is a thicker wire, so this is gonna have a different spring rate. This is a lighter wire, uh, but this one has more coils. This one has less coils. That's the problem with springs. Now, if you have a company such as this right here, Axon, they are very, very consistent uh, with the wires. I know these are Yokomos, they're made by Axon. The nice thing about these is these are about $10 a pair versus if you buy the uh, Mugen or the X-Ray, those are about $20 a pair. So save yourself the trouble. What's the main difference between these and those? These are actually a little shorter. Uh, so uh, ideally you want to use the shorter shafts or you want to limit the inside uh, travel of the spring, which is something that the X-Ray, the newer X-Ray X4s do. They have the shorter shaft and uh, the Mugen MTC2R, if you compare the shafts, they're also shorter. I believe they're a millimeter shorter because they also use slightly shorter springs, but this is an option. So going to these, Uh, I've just mentioned what I generally uh, use on, just like I said, factory electronics. Uh, and then the ride height, you're going to measure it right about here. So just sit on the ground with the battery, compress it, and then measure the ride height from here to the bottom, here, right about here, and then right about here. That's where I measure. Uh, you might be running, depending on how you bash, you might be running maybe seven, 7.5 in the front, eight millimeters in the rear. You can drop the car and it handles very, very nice. You can go down to about a 4.5 in the front and about a five in the rear, or you can do about a five and a 5.5 in the rear. That's, I would say that's probably the goal, uh, somewhat of a sweet spot for the Fortec 2.0. And uh, 3.0 is pretty heavy, so you're probably gonna be using some more springs. Maybe you wanna go the next up. And uh, instead of using what I used, which was the uh, this one, the 500 CST, well, 516, uh, you might want to bump it up to maybe a 575 on the, like the Corvette, the 3.0s, those, but upgrade the tires. Those tires are rubbish. Uh, get the super tires, those are better. 
Maybe I'll do a video about those tires at some point. But anyway, going to these. Uh, there's different types of spring rates generally on these cars, and this is mainly running asphalt. I do not have experience running these cars on carpet. I apologize, but everything that I've said prior to this applies. Just look at what the car is doing. If the car rotates way too much, just stiffen the rear springs a little. If the car pushes too much, wait, I think, hold on, let me backtrack. Uh, all right, so it pushes too much, uh, go a little harder in the front, and then right, oversteers. Man, I, I really need a body right now. Hold on, there we go. All right, here's the car. Uh, if the car is pushing, go stiffer in the rear or lighter in the front. If the car is oversteering, do the opposite. All right. So back to the springs. Now let's just say, uh, so I've already told you kind of what to do on the Ford Tech. Uh, on your touring cars, uh, some of the springs that you may want to consider is uh, consider like a 2.65 in the front or 2.6 and then do a 2.7 in the rear uh, on asphalt. That's something good to start with. And then after that, if you can get a 0.5 heavier, you can do that. Uh, you can do an eight. If you do, if, if the difference is too much between the front and the rear, so say you're running like a 2.5 and a 2.9, your car's just going to spin out uh, that rear end. Anytime you try applying power, it's gonna come into the turn really, really smooth off power. But then once you apply power, you need to be super smooth or else you're just going to spin out. So that's something else to keep in mind about springs. Uh, if you're taking coming in the turns and it's coming in really nice off power, so a lot of steering off power, a lot of control, but then as soon as you apply power, if it just wants to spin out, your rear springs are way too stiff compared to the front springs or your front springs are way too soft compared to the rear. Right, so that's very important. Uh, now, if you get the opposite happening, then it's the opposite, right? If, if you're going in losing control, but then on power, uh, you're getting grip, then your rear is too soft relative to the front or the front is, uh, too hard of a spring rate relative to the rear. So those are some of the things that you have to look for. Uh, and your springs, to be honest, they don't have, there, there shouldn't be that much difference. On the small touring cars, just one number is more than enough. Just go, say, 2.6 in the front. You can go 2.7 in the rear. If you need to bump them up more, say you're doing VTA, a little heavier car, you can do it 2.7 in the front, 2.8 in the rear. So you don't have to go around wasting a ton of money or spending, I should say, a ton of money on springs unless you really want to experiment, tune, um, go around. You can just, just get a set. 2.6, put those in the front, 2.7, put them in the rear, just for touring car, do that. Uh, so again, that's based on what my buddy was doing to his car. At some point, maybe I'll talk about motors and what I found about motors. Um, now, something that, for example, he enjoys, uh, which works well too, is he'll run a, uh, uh, a he'll run linear springs in the rear and then a variable spring rate in the front. And the reason why is because you sort of get a little bit of both worlds. If you, you get the, say you run 2.7s in the rear, and then in the front, you can run, for example, a spring rate that goes from 2.4 to 2.6 or 2.5 to 2.7 or even 2.8. Uh, that's gonna depend on you. So if you go with the variable spring rates in the front, you're gonna have to play with those. Um, but the reason why is it'll be soft, right? So the front will be soft. You're going to get that steering, but then eventually it'll stiffen up so that it gives you traction on the outside part of the turn. So you'll get the steering entering the turn because it's initially soft, but then as you start powering out, because then the front springs get harder because of that dual rate, uh, now you can power out. So that's the reason why. Uh, he does that. And to give you an example, one of the reasons why I say um, springs are the best mod that you can make is the following. During many of our races, and we were comparing this data and information, many times I would take them on, uh, say, on the straights or on the fast parts of the track. But then once we were in the infield, I mean, he would obliterate me. So I'd obliterate him in the other, and I know I'm using obliterate. But the reality is 
we were very competitive with each other and we could keep up with each other uh, in some of the races. And I wish uh, I would have to go back and tell you which one specifically. Uh, <clears throat> but one of the main things that would happen is, again, uh, let's just say he was pulling ahead in the infield. I mean, I would catch up and sometimes maybe, maybe pass him or just make up time on the fast parts of the track. And then on the slow parts of the track, he would make up whatever time maybe I pulled on him on the other ones and we would go back and forth. Uh, so now combining the two based on the motor information and the spring information just from racing, uh, I mean, definitely springs are the way to go and then worry about your motor timing. There's a relationship with gearing and timing. Maybe I'll do a video at some other point. Uh, <clears throat> but in a uh, nutshell, and I say a nutshell, uh, springs, if you get these, these are made by Axon. Uh, they actually make the springs for them. And the reason why I like these springs, as opposed to these, and I know it's the company that makes them, is these, these use the paint, and I hate the paint because sometimes it falls off and then you don't know what you have unless you kept track of how many coils, thickness, everything on a notebook, which I do not, I uh, probably should. But these, uh, in gold lettering, you'll have the spring rate. So these are the ones that I would use for the front. So these are 2.5 to 2.8. So these are the variable or the dual rate, whatever they're called. Uh, oh, right here, here we go. So you can get these right here. And then for the rear, uh, 2.7s is probably what you want to try out and then see what your car does based on your driving and then, you know, move them up, move them down. Uh, just refer to the first part of the video and you'll see what does what. Uh, when it comes to the Fortec, if you have a stock Fortec, or even if you add a little bit of power, uh, the springs have now made a mess. Uh, springs that are actually pretty good to use. Uh, I do like these, the 63, 8363 in the rear, and these in the front, and then right height, I'd have to check the car. It's it's about a millimeter difference between the front and the rear, and I know that might seem like a lot because on touring cars on these, you're probably only doing 0.4 of a millimeter difference between the front and the rear. Uh, actually, droop is probably more important uh, than that 0.1 or 0.2 difference. Um, but again, on the Fortec, on those points that I told you to measure, uh, rear, about a 5, 5.5, and the front to about a 4.5 to 5. So have about half a millimeter to a full millimeter in difference between the front and the rear. The rear, you always want the rear to be slightly taller than the front. Don't do the other way around. Uh, but that is it. I hope this is helpful. Uh, for those of you getting into the hobby or wondering what to do when it comes to springs, uh, spring rates, how to choose them, uh, the oils, these are just some of the basic things. Uh, to oils, I forgot to recap on this. If it bottoms out too much too fast, you probably need slightly thicker oil. Uh, if the car doesn't come up right away, you either need lighter oil or stiffer springs. So if you have the right springs, you just know you have the right springs, then play around with oil. And I've already given you sort of a ballpark for the springs on where you should be on those cars. I'm doing a shock body upgrade. So these are the aluminum shock bodies. They're made by STNC. Uh, so ST, actually, is that supposed to be an R? That's supposed to be an R, uh, racing concept. So ST, RC, racing concepts. Uh, now these here, the downside about these is uh, they do have more play than the stock plastic ones. Uh, that, I mean, that's the only potential downside. But then again, given that there's more clearance and it's aluminum on plastic, it should glide pretty well. So uh, wear, as far as wear is concerned, not so much on the piston maybe the o-rings uh but you're probably going to be replacing the oil and those little o-rings a lot faster so keep holding the card i wasn't sure if it was actually on screen or not but that's the part number it comes in pairs so if you want to do all four you have to replace them but the reason why i like these uh this is an upgrade i've I don't think I've ever spoken about is it has an adjustable collar so you don't have to use the pre-clips. I strongly dislike the pre-clips. So the stock parts that you're going to need, you're going to need uh, the seals inside, shafts. Well, long story short, just take the preloads out and the collar, you don't need it and you're going to get rid of the body. Uh, that's the easiest way to view it. Now, uh, 
so don't, don't mess with the Eclipse. I strongly dislike dealing with Eclipse. Uh, if you remove the Eclipse, uh, you have to take the piston out. There's another Eclipse and it'll slide off the bottom. But in order to install it, you're going to have to remove this anyway. So just grab your shock pliers. So these are the ones I have. Uh, I bought these off AliExpress for maybe $7 shipped. Uh, you can always buy the hoodie ones for $30 if you want. Uh, they are very, very similar, if not the same, except for they say hoodie. So they probably help you do things faster, maybe. I have no idea. Uh, but these work great. So you can just hold them by the shaft. It's safe. Uh, once you remove that, just push everything through. Uh, and that is it. Now, uh, when you push it through, one of the things that you need to do is, uh, I forgot to mention, so this thing, you have to make sure that you loosen this uh, just to release compression from the O-rings in here. So when you pull the threads too, you don't accidentally, you know, cut these up. Uh, now here, uh, I'm just going to reuse these because these are actually not that old at all. Uh, but if yours is somewhat worn out, I would strongly recommend you just buy new seals. Uh, I mean, really just buy them. Uh, especially if your shocks were already leaking. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and push through here. You can use a pick. Uh, you can use a driver. Just be gentle. Uh, if you're using a flat head, be very, very careful because the little corners on the flat head can pinch the seals. Uh, but here we go. So we have a seal, a little spacer, and a seal. And so they go in that order. Now, if you're installing brand new ones, you want to use some type of slime or grease. Uh, you can use some shock oil too to lubricate them. Always make sure you lubricate these parts uh, before you install them. But that is it. So seal, spacer, seal. And now we seat this. Do not tighten all the way. Just let it be like this. Uh, if this is brand new or dry, make sure you use some, you can use some green slime, something similar to this. This is amazing, but there's still some shock oil in here. So I will just push it through. Now, once it's through, go ahead and thread everything fully. And we're gonna do the same thing. Grab the pliers, use the pliers here. If you don't have this type of plier, you can always use some uh, towels and then grab some normal pliers, but use the towel just to make sure that you don't uh, damage the shaft. Uh, now you can ignore the RC in the rear, uh, in the background, I should say, just ignore the RC in the background. Uh, my nephews are over, so I'm trying to get this done while they mess around with their slashes. I just got them some new batteries, uh, so they're just out there bashing. Uh, but here we go. So after this, uh, because this is a Fortec, this is a heavy car, uh, I'm going to use as close as possible to 500 CST, which is uh, 40 weight in this case. So this is rated at 516, close enough for what I want. Uh, 400, I think, is too light for a Fortec. Fortecs are heavy. Uh, I mean, fully dressed, a Fortec is probably is going to be just under 2 kilos. You're probably looking at 1,800 grams, close to it. I've done some weight comparisons in the past in other videos. Uh, so they are heavy cars, uh, but to be honest, I love I love Fortex. Uh, it's my favorite touring car. Uh, I'm not saying it's a competition driven. You're going to go out there and beat everybody in TC if you use a Fortex chassis. Not at all. They're too heavy. But if you just want to have fun, find parts that are affordable. That's the key thing, affordable uh, and readily available. There's nothing like a Fortex 2.0. They're amazing. Uh, so it's definitely my favorite. That's the reason why that's what my kids have. Uh, but anyway, moving on, uh, that is it. So, uh, one of the things to do, oh, I forgot to show you, uh, let me open it again. Uh, you want to make sure that you bleed the shock. And here we go. Now I'm having, I have a bunch of oil on my hands. So I'm having a hard time grabbing this, uh, let me use my handy dandy pliers. Just so I don't screw anything up, I'll just grab it by the collar. So here I'm just gonna grab the collar with the pliers, if I can. I think I'm right about there. 
And we'll grab this. There we go. It's that simple when you have the right tools. Uh, all right, let me remove the cap again. Uh, so what you do is uh, you fill it with oil and then you just push this up slowly and then just bring it down and then you'll see some bubbles. Uh, now, if you overfill slightly, not too much. If you overfill, overfill too much, it's not gonna seal properly because there's going to be oil between the seal and this. So don't overdo it. If it's just a little, the shock will be able to push it out. Uh, but once you get rid of the bubbles, you can go ahead and seat this, clean the excess off, and uh, check for the pack. So pack will be that. That's how much pack. And I'm just gonna leave the pack on there because again, it's a very heavy car. Although the springs are really what uh, lift the car up. The oil is just there to dampen the uh, the force of the car compressing and then the spring keeps it up. But this, this works fine. If you wanna get rid of some of the pack, you can go halfway and then tighten this or you can go all the way in and then tighten it. But I'm just gonna leave the whole pack. I did it on all of them. Uh, then you wanna compare them all and two, measure the distance from here to here with calipers and make sure it's a similar distance as the rest. Now the last thing to do is the color. Now notice the color already put some of that green slime. The reason why is there's an O-ring here. Try to smear that a little farther in. And uh, you want to lubricate that O-ring so that it doesn't catch on the threads and tear up as much. Uh, and that O-ring is just there so this color doesn't slide up and down. Now normally what I do is just like that, I'll go left once I hear the click, then I'll start going right and threading it in. Uh, and we're almost finished. I just want to finish this one. I'll show you. And then I'm just going to put this on the car. I can show you the other three that are already on the car. Uh, once you do everything, you want to check the right height. Uh, if you have a Ford Tech, you're probably going to measure somewhere near the front of the chassis and you're probably going to want to be about 7.5 millimeters in the front and then about eight millimeters in the rear. Yes, the Fortec does ride pretty high, but again, it's a bashing car. That's what it's made for. Uh, the springs that I'm using for the front are lighter springs in the rear. I'm using the reds, uh, which the reds are 8362. So that's the part number for the reds, which I'm using in the front. The rear, I'm using 8363. So I'm using the 62s in the front, 63s in the rear, a little stiffer frame, uh, springs in the rear of the car. And then the rest of the parts, you can just put away, give them away, do whatever you want. Uh, but that's it for the shock. This is what the shocks look like mounted. So those are the two rears. And I just need to do the one front and then check the right height. My, my hair, my car, my, my rod.